Cause he'll come through, kick you in the dick Old man Wade ain't nothing to fuck with Old man Wade might start a gun quick Don't call old man Wade a punk bitch Cause he'll come through, kick you in the dick Congratulations old man Wade For you were victorious by way of swift kick to the dick and welcome to the Old Man Wade Show. I am your host, the God of Stuff. I'm the, suple- the severely ashy Old Man Wade. And right across me is the pinnacle of political perfection, the superior Super Bowl copy. What up, everybody? Uh, to my left, uh, the genius of justification, Just Greg. What's up? Oh, God, it's been a long time since you've been on the fucking show. I know Facts. I had to. And ladies and gentlemen, why, why, slowly creeping, trying, to, trying not to make any noise, but I'm being a dick. My lovely life. Hey. With her normal enthusiasm, as always. I as- try to get my meds. <laughs> Um, how's everybody doing today? Uh, great, man. You know, we live in a world now with a vaccine, so, you know, everything's great now. You gonna take it? Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm taking mean, it. Judge I, me all you want, anti-vaxxers, but yeah. Yeah, I'm taking the fucking vaccine. I don't really give a fuck. I'm taking the I'm, shit out of that. I'm vaccine. gonna take my time. You gonna take your time? Yeah. Take my time. I'm judging you. Right. I'm gonna Do take my baby. time. <laughs> I need to feel comfortable yeah. before I get in that seat and roll up my sleeve, you know? It, honestly, I get it. Especially yeah. like, especially when black people say it. Like, I think that everybody should be vaccinated, but when there's a hesitation, um, I understand it. it yeah. It's hard to trust people that... I have, just want to see what happens, you know? Yeah. Like, I don't want to just hop on it because they say, well, it's the thing to do. It's, yeah. Well, let, let me see how how we... many How many, how many women... <laughs> Have you said hop on it? It's the thing to do. <laughs> Zero times. I'm not catching a case. But here's the, here's, the, here's the people I'm judging. Here's the people I'm judging. People that eat out on um, eat out a girl or give head on the first date if they're not getting the vaccine. Like, are you serious? Oh, okay. All right. I was about to say. Or, I, was like, I was like, wait. Or, what? Or, or people that just buy weed from a random dude that they find on the corner, like. So you trust these people, yeah? But you don't trust people are so selective. Experts. I saw a funny tweet today that said something along the lines of, "If you were the type of person that sucked on a washcloth when you were young, you should not have to worry about the vaccine." <laughs> Oh, that's fucking great. I tried to rem- I rem- and I'm I've trying done, to remember I've, I've if I've done that, done that yeah, when I've, I was a I've kid. And depending how dirty that bathroom was, you probably already immune. Oh god. <laughs> was it you was you sent the video the picture of um a New York subway station and they're like, if you've actually gone into this subway station, you shouldn't be worried about the vaccine. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm I'm get, I'm getting it. Yeah. But I also my therapist said something, he was because he asked me if I was taking it, I was like, Yeah. And he was like, Okay, he goes, um, he said he's been telling all his clients, like, you know, don't be bullied into doing either. And that's what he's encouraging people. Like, if you don't want to take it, then don't take it. If you want to take it, take it. But don't be bullied either way. Like, exactly. You know? Don't 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 let social media sway you. You know, I, I, I get it. Everybody's concerns, I think everybody's concerns, either for or against it, are legit. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's really up to them. Not yeah. everybody's concerns are legit. Well, well, well. <laughs> but no, if it's concerning yeah, to yeah, you, because yeah. it's either you want to take it or you not, yeah, or you don't want to yeah. take it. That's concerning. But if you think you that know? you think that uh, Bill Gates has like a microchip inserted into the syringes that are yeah. going to track you, whatever. Like, See, I don't worry about stuff like that. I'm not going to take you too seriously, but especially when um you have you have a device in your hand that's tracking you everywhere you go anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm one of those people who don't give a shit either way. Yeah. Like if I if we actually are being tracked or listened yeah. to via our laptops, our like Google Home assistants and stuff, I don't give a fuck. I mean, we like, are. I have nothing yeah. to hide. <laughs> yeah. I have nothing yeah. to hide. I'm not hiding children, or I don't have kitty porn. I don't have weapons of mass destruction. Like yeah. I don't care. I'm a normal person. Look, I got a weapon of mass destruction. <laughs> <laughs> you a nasty. You a nasty motherfucker. The only. The only. <laughs> Security measure I take is putting electrical tape over the um over the camera on my desktop. The front face of the camera. That's, that's the only thing yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what's funny? Yeah. I, I, it, normally I would be like that too, but I don't even use my laptop or jacket anymore. So hey. whatever. Oh well, you know, I don't use it. I, you know, I take the tape off before I check it. So I'm on the I'm on the FBI to get it. I've seen that episode of Black Mirror. So yeah, I don't know. 
I don't need them um, watching me jacking it off. So I'm good, man. I like how we how we went from you know COVID vaccine to jacking off in front of an FBI agent that's jacking you on your laptop. I mean, if they want to watch it, be my guest. But like, good content. You know, whatever. That's just not my business. So I I got a bit of a rant. Um, really? and, and Greg front kind of fails me. A lot of it has to do with Twitter. People on Twitter are it, Twitter. I love more than Facebook, probably not as much as Instagram. But the people on Twitter are can be some of the most hypocritical, obnoxious beings on the fucking planet. Like the old man way um, phrase is "happy in my hypocrisy." I know who I am. I'm mm-hmm. well aware that I'm going to say something in minute five that's going to contradict everything I said in minute 20. I get it. I'm honest with mine. Mm-hmm. But I listen, to, I read stuff people say, and I'm like, you literally just, um, oh, I forgot the word I'm looking for. You literally just, um, everything you just said is contradictory to what you just said. But then if someone calls you out on it, you they get all mad. It's like, what are you mad about? You, like, what, like, you know what I mean? You said what you said, so do it. And that's the other thing. They'll be the same person be like, I said what I said. Which, which one is it? So you're saying that people on social media tend to not be rational. Yeah. Hmm. That's exactly what it is. And like, so it's one of the reasons why a lot of times I don't bother adding people in things. Hmm. Like, because a few years ago, Artie Lang said something about Carrie Champion. And everyone was up in arms that she was pissed about it and was like, you know, blah, blah, blah. And someone asked me, like, well, what was the big issue? I'm like, he added her. So he wanted her to see it. So therefore, you put yourself you put yourself in that in that ocean. Mm-hmm. So that's how it's gonna happen. So the reason I bring this up is because I'm just letting everyone know right now. Fuck you. I am not. I'm not pulling any punches anymore. Okay. Yes, this is me pulling punches for the last two hundred some odd episodes. Okay. I'm not doing it anymore. Like I literally, I was talking. My therapist. I've been talking about. It's like I've stressed myself out so much, just not saying what's on my mind. Mm. I look at, and it's funny, because I look at look at Greg, who pretty much is a little more reserved than I know him when we're, like, speaking person to person, but you don't hold back, and I respect the shit out of that. You're the same way, which is, comes up to one of the questions that someone asked you, um, Javi, but, like, the, I, uh-huh. It's that old boy. <laughs> but the idea of it is actually kind of funny, because it's like, I, why the fuck am I so reserved? Fuck that noise. I'm done. I am so done. Yeah. I did a show with someone a month and a half ago. And they were going on and on and on about something. Then I voiced an opinion. And they got on me. I'm like, yo, don't don't put this episode out. If you're gonna like be a dick about shit, yeah. I, I'm so happy to hear that. Like, cause I, I know we've had conversations, and I know I know for a fact that everybody that you hang out with that care about you probably had this conversation with you too. It's like, Absolutely. yo, don't worry about what people. Think I had this conversation you know with Greg when we lived together. Yeah, you know, cause I think you 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 are you are a very empathetic person, right? Like, I think. Um, even sometimes to a fault, like you really care about whether or not you hurt somebody's feelings or whatever, which, which I think, you know, that's great because you're not an asshole, right? But I think there's a balance to that, right? Because people will take advantage of that and it will stress you the fuck out. Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm more than happy to hear you saying like, you know what? Fuck them. I'm going to say what I want because you have a lot to share. You're a freaking writer. Yeah, so it's, just it's, that fucking, shit out. it's fucking annoying. You know, like, that's one of the reasons I don't read the comments on a lot of things. Yeah. I don't like fuck them. I wrote it, you read it. I read the comments. <laughs> I, can't. <laughs> I can't. I I absolutely will not. I absolutely will not read the comments. I want to find this one comment someone um wrote and it was like the most eloquently read eloquently written thing and then he ended it with go fuck yourself. <laughs> it was so great. I was like, wow, I'm not even I responded I'm like I'm not even mad. That's that what I'm saying. Beautiful. Some some of some of the troll shit is impressive, yo. It's it's, it's aggravating, but some of it's kind of creative. <laughs> uh Greg, have you heard this one? But it's just like, it was like, do X, Y, and Z, you cowards. It's like, no. <laughs> no, I didn't hear that one. I it's see. always like, you know, like, it was like, make a movie about this, you cowards. It's like, no. <laughs> Fuck you. Hey. You know. <laughs> this shit just kills me, man. Make your own DM. So you're now the, um, the Lord of Enlightenment. The Lord of Enlightenment. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to go that far. The Epiphany God. The Epiphany God. I know a girl named Epiphany. You would know a girl named Epiphany. I do not know a girl named Epiphany. Oh, man. Shout out to all the girls named Epiphany. So, 
I'm pretty sure I'm spelling this wrong, but whatever. Google will correct it when I um, put it into the computer. So I went online and I asked um, some people some questions about, you know, is there, is there anything that you'd like to ask a guy? Like, you know, I was going to have my friends on there. Uh, one of them came up with, um, they'd like to know why Columbo can't be friends without any alternative al- alternative motives. Why can't guys be friends with, with women without any alternative motives? Who who asked this question? I, I'm going to keep my people everyone's name out. Was, was it a male or a female? It was a woman. It was women asking guys questions. You want to take this? Okay. I'll take it. Um, well, I learned a very long time ago that, well, the way I see it is that People in general, it's not just a guy thing, first of all. It's really not just a guy thing. It's not. Because women are very covert in the same fashion. Mm -hmm. But I find that it's natural for people, men and women, to befriend each other. And some of the basis of that friendship being because there's a certain level of attraction that's normal like they may not it may not be like the whole reason why they're even interacting or have any type of um interest in each other but it might be in the back of their mind you know but um i think some like some guys um i'm a guy so i can speak for guys but I know some guys that I know some g- guys befriend women, obviously because they're attractive and because they they probably don't they probably don't have the balls to say hey what's up I yeah. mean yeah. you or like right from the gate um, yeah. they instead of just coming right out and saying hey listen I'm really feeling you uh, I'd like to take you out I'd like to go on a date I like to be more than your friend like and get to know each other like. Yep. They rather just take the what might seem like the safer route mm-hmm. and just pretend to be their friend, and hopefully when they see a an opening, they'll swoop right in and say, "Hey, what's up with you and me?" And that's sketchy to me. Well, that's precisely why I don't take a lot of the like, oh, the f- she put me in the friend zone, whatever. She's a bitch because she put me in the friend zone. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't take a lot of that seriously because I think it come, it stems from that. When I see people go through that, mm-hmm. it's usually guys that don't really have the confidence yeah. to say, like, yo, I'm feeling you mm-hmm. from the get. So yeah. it, it creates a, a false first impression. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, even if she might have been interested in you, yeah, the relationship started off as like a friendship type of mm-hmm. situation, right? And she might be talking to a whole bunch of other people that are way yeah. more confident than you, yeah. a lot more upfront. So, of course, she's going to put you in that corner. But it isn't yeah. because she, she's fucking with your mind or whatever, like, mm-hmm. purposely. It's just... Yo, you never really stepped up to the plate. Like, stepped up to the plate. If you get rejected, you get rejected. Or she just mm-hmm. might not be feeling you. Or she just, or, yeah, or she just might want to be your friend. Like, I think, for me, like, I'm more comfortable around women, period. Mm-hmm. Like, that, because I, I grew up around them. Like, like my family's 90% female. Like, and it's just how I've always been. And I'm also a natural flirt. Like, I just flirt not even knowing about it. So, like, mm-hmm. I've never, I, I've rarely been in a situation where, this might sound horrible, but like a lot of a lot of women that I were I, I was friends with, mm-hmm. you know, if I was attracted to them, there's a good chance that something may have happened, right? Okay. Um, but that's only because like from the get go, flirting, like mm-hmm. I, you know, like the conversation, like the conversations we have sometimes go to a certain level. Um, so that's precisely why I have that perspective, like because I I see I see it's exact the the issue comes from how you interact with the people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that don't create that false impression. Yeah, I think again, I think it's creepy because when you finally tell that person, you show them that romantic interest going from just being friends and appearing to be interested on just a friendly level to yeah. being suddenly romantically interested. Yeah. It kind of makes them I can imagine it it kind of makes them get a little uncomfortable or and look back at times where you know you you presented yourself yeah. as someone who's genuine 
and someone you'd, you'd like to share your secrets with and like I trusted friend I, I got trusted friends. yeah stuff like, yeah, like yeah, that yeah. when yeah. secretly you yeah. were you know plotting yeah, you know that's yeah. that's real weak to me and I've always like I know I've said this many times to my friends my female friends particular too that I'm not with that yeah. when I if I'm interested in somebody in a rom- on a mo- on a romantic level I prefer to pursue them in that manner Mm -hmm. first Mm -hmm. yeah if it doesn't work out if she's not interested but she still wants to be cool and nice about it all right cool we'll be we can be cool like it's no biggie whatever um and that's what it's gonna be i'm not gonna continue to like i'm not gonna pretend her be her friend to be her friend from then on and then like secretly plot you know, because I know some guys do that, too. Yeah, yeah. If you're my friend, you're my friend. If you're someone I'm interested in, you're going to be someone that I'm, I'm going to show interest in. I'm not going to leave any, like, anything up yeah. for interpretation or anything like that. And I think a lot, and most people, most people that I chill with, most people yeah. that I chill with have that same mentality. So yeah. I think, I think the answer to the question is, that's not every guy. Yeah, like, it's, it's, not. it's And it's um, not every woman. Like, right, like, it's, it's, some people are just creeps. And they're the ones that will, th- those are the main ones that, are, that, that will say, like, I'm a nice guy, whatever, whatever, yeah. but you're really and, not. So, let me just say this. There's also been situations where, and I've been in those situations where you start hanging out with somebody, and it's like, it's completely friend, it's completely friendly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You develop feelings. Yeah. That kind of happens. But I think there's a difference between, like, developing feelings and just saying, and like, you know what I mean? If you develop feelings and you know the other person kind of isn't feeling that way, it's kind of selfish to even, like, say something, you know what I mean? Yeah. Especially when... It could make the friendship a little more awkward. You know what I mean? Yeah. I also have a lot of. I also have a lot of. I have a good amount of women friends. I think it's probably even on both sides of it. Um, but I also know women know that like I let them know up front like yo I'm married. Yeah. So mm-hmm. the conversations we have are strictly platonic. So let's not mm-hmm. even get that confused. And I've noticed one woman in particular that I work. That doesn't with, help though. <laughs> no, it, it, sometimes it doesn't. But I think because it's like I let it clear like don't even yeah. don't even fuck a flirt with me because yeah. it's not going anywhere. There's one woman in particular I work with who respects the fact that, that I do because most of the some of the dudes I work with they cheat on their wives some mm-hmm. of the um, other people who work in the building they cheat on their husbands and they just go out and they're, they're just fucking everything mm-hmm. I ain't with that not my and they still ain't taking the vaccine nasty <laughs> <laughs> yeah so I think the, but uh, so I agree with both of you guys but I also I, actually there is really no more, more, more to it like it's it's you know yeah not, you can be friends with somebody as long as you're up front all right. It also shows, uh, bef- before we move on, it also shows a lack of discipline. Mm. That's true. Because yeah. I believe, and I always tell people this too, it's a life hack to be to be disciplined, yeah. especially in certain areas. Especially if you can control yourself around women, like if you have like yeah. a sexual interest in somebody or a romantic interest in somebody, or it might not be the right time mm. or the right place. Or just somebody that you know they're not they, they might not be in the right state of mind or they might not be you know in a yeah. in a place in their life where they can entertain any romance or yeah. anything sexual with somebody you know when you have discipline you, you can be like okay well there's like four billion other women on the planet like why am I gonna do that or you can be the guy like the guys who are not who have no discipline or and then they're just they're, they're not going to read the room and try At to hold everybody. You know what I mean? Yeah. At funerals, yeah, yeah. with their kids, Duh, yeah. that's at just the gas nasty. station. Like, yeah. But, like, me personally, I can, I I like it. I have female friends who, who say, hey, Greg, one of the things that I like about you is that you've never tried to holler at me. Mm-hmm. I have female friends that most like ninety percent of their guy friends eventually try to holler, mm. eventually try to sleep with them, like did creepy stuff. And I'm, I'm the guy, well one of the guys that they've met that doesn't and been cool with for months or even years, mm. and has never tried anything because if we're on some romantic shit, we're gonna be on romantic shit. Mm. If that's if I want that to happen and, and she wants to have that to happen. If, if I just see you as a friend, I'm treating you as a friend. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, you know it's what's crazy? Just... I know you want to get to the next topic, but you bring, no, up, we a, can you, you bring up a great point because I think that discipline, not only is it helpful for that, 
it's also helpful to keep you away from situations that are harmful. Like, so not only should you read the room um, to figure out whether or not somebody is willing to be in a relationship with you, yeah. you got to read the room to figure out if somebody's in a state of mind that pushes them into getting into relationships with people because they're yeah. either lonely, they're mm-hmm. desperate, you know, they just had a breakup, you know, like the rebound situation. Which like, is super you predatory. Can, you, can fi- you can find yourself, it's predatory, one, and two, it's not going to end, it's not going to end the way you think it's going to end, mm-hmm. right? Somebody's going to somebody's gonna get stressed out. Mm-hmm. Somebody's going to end up hurt. Like, it's not going to be, like, it's, it's nothing good ever comes from those types of situations. But, right? you so, know, like, you, it's very important to, like, if you're friends, if you're truly friends with somebody, male or female, you need to know their life. You need to know what they're what they're going through, right? And not not and, and not, not a way to, to yeah. like to like prey on like no. their weaknesses and things like. But just to I, be a friend, just to be yeah. somebody that they can depend on. All right, so I mean? um, so let me let me take this. I've been in situations where I've been completely friends with somebody, and we ended up fucking. Like you know what I mean? It doesn't work out. We're still friends. Yeah. Is there a difference between that, like where like? Feelings do happen, situations do come up, and it's not the intention, and you end up fucking. Is there a difference? There is. I think, now see, I don't think that happened because, like, the sky was blue one day. You know what I mean? (laughs) I think there had to be some little bit of buildup before that came about. Because I can think of a situation where I was just cool with somebody, and we talked all the time. And I didn't really have intentions of being romantic with this person because I don't know why I just didn't really see that happening. Yeah. And then I noticed that there were a few times, even though she was attractive, there were a few times where we kind of had some had an exchange that was flirty yeah. and she meant it and I meant it, but we didn't we didn't let it go anywhere. Uh-huh. And then I remember one time I was like, you know, I think this kind of reached its boiling point. What's good? You know, let's let's go. And we we did our thing, and that was that. But generally, I don't I don't sleep with my friends. I don't like it's just I'm I don't going, like having so. that blurry. I don't like having that blurred line. With that blurred going, line yeah. where you know this is my friend, but not really because we slept. We used to sleep Have you together, always felt like, that way? Because we're older now. Like I. I I feel, I feel that when I say, like, a lot of my friends that I, I was attracted mm-hmm. to, if there was a mutual attraction, things happened. Mm-hmm. But I was also in my early 20s, late teens at yeah. that point in time, right? Like, Same. You know? Um, yes. I had to learn, like, early on, of course, like, everybody else, like, she, if I had a female friend that was, I found attractive, I could be her friend. Mm-hmm. But if she ever called me up and said, hey, I want to be more than your friend, I'd be like, all right, what were you waiting for? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But as I got older and more mature and I I saw what happens, what happened to some people in those situations and I didn't want to end up in those situations yeah. myself, I just decided like, you know what, just you got to have a clear distinction, distinction with people. Yeah. We either going to be friends or we're going to be more than friends. Yeah. I'd rather, if I, if I know I'm interested in somebody from the gate, they're going to... I'm going to approach them from a romantic level yes. from the gate. Because you're being honest about yeah. the situation from the, from the get And I'm not saying I'm going to be all up in your face ASAP. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that. I'm going to fill you out. And if there's, I'm, and if I'm getting, you know, good signals and, you know, you know, a lot of green lights here and there, okay, cool. Mm-hmm. We'll see where this goes. But if there's things that I don't like, I'll just leave it alone. Mm-hmm. Because I'm not, like some guys, I'm not, I'm I'm not led by my penis. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. So I do like I currently have a few female friends do I that I do think are attractive. But even those female friends can say that I've never made a pass at them. Mm. And it's not because I don't find them attractive. They are attractive. But if I've already decided that you're not someone that I want to pursue, then I'm gonna keep it that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna flirt with you. I'm not gonna like send you no. But you hate shit though. How do you, how do you, how do you keep that? <laughs> how do you keep that that flirtation? Because I, no, I, I have tell the you that's one, I, have I can the say discipline. that I'm patient. <laughs> I have the discipline. Yeah. But you know what? That's also as you know, a lot of people who know you can just you do just crack it up. Yeah. Um, I also have a lot of friends. Um, women friends 
mm-hmm. who mm-hmm. Um, look at you like that as well. And they're like, in they're Haitian, they go, Greg's not like the typical, and, and this is them saying it, not me. Greg's not the typical nasty, like cheating oh, Haitian nasty. man. <laughs> oh, I've been a hoe before. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, oh. When people ask, like, I'm you, straight up, I've been a hoe before. But speaking of being that a, was. Speaking of being a hoe before. <laughs> <laughs> um, someone I asked this question and someone DM'd me on the slide. Um, Greg, when are you gonna let me slap them cheeks? Oh my god! <laughs> first of all, <laughs> first of all, what cheeks? Because I ain't got cheeks like that. You want to slap them cheeks though? <laughs> Yo, I was fucking dying when they sent no, me this. But it was. I, it was a listener who, like, someone who, I don't even know, but they they had DM'd me, and they were just like, oh, I love his voice, and I love his personality and style, and I'm like, let me keep your name out of They were like, yeah, I'm like, all right, I'll keep your name out Yeah, I'm not going to lie, like, I brought, I brought, like, women around here, like, not my wife, right, that, that, when Greg was here, and yeah. they are like, oh, they fucking love yeah. him. Yeah. I'm like, all right, shoot, it's like, these girls don't talk to nobody, so. Yo, he's Greg, yo, no, let me tell you, Greg is a fuck, let me tell you, there are, a, a, when me and Greg work together, mm-hmm. There were two sets of women we worked. <laughs> and That's Greg, true. Yeah. There was the, the there was the fuck Greg coalition and the I want to fuck Greg coalition. <laughs> it was no. There was no. There was no in between. There was no. In as between. you know, um, a homegirl Megan wasn't. It wasn't in there, but she's a no. Cool, just, but there was there, like, actually there was an in but, between. I mean, there were people. Who, have, this I hyperbole and all that. And then there were there were some who. Hated me, yo, and I did not know why. They just hated me, <laughs> and then there were some who just who were mad cool, loved me, and it was yo, all good. One of my favorite. I think just, I, so. I think, the ladies know who's listening. Greg has no kids, and he's. Uh, I believe he's available. Nah, I'm, I'm not available. Um. So let me tell you, this was I'm trying to give you the old man plug. I'm uh, just saying. So this was one of my favorite moments in um in Gap history. We were sitting at the front, and somebody was talking. Big shit about you around me. And I went, you know he's my roommate, right? <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, what? And they, they, they didn't believe me. They thought I was fucking around. And then they saw me and you get on the bus and get to, they was like, he's really your roommate. I went, oh yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I'm not going to say anything, but you know, watch, I, watch, watch your fucking mouth around me. <laughs> And I'm, and I wouldn't be surprised if it was, if it was somebody that I barely spoke to. <sighs> <as> well. <laughs> People hate well, it. girls are like, the, yo, and that's the thing. It's not just men, because I know for a fact there's a lot of women. And again, I think it's confidence. Like either as a man or a female, you don't you don't have the confidence to approach somebody because you think they're gonna reject you. There's a lot mm-hmm. of women out there that are doing the same thing. Like they'll become friends with you, hoping mm-hmm. that you might make the first move or something like that, and it never happens, and it might cause some tension. There was there was a lot of that because I've seen some women who would talk shit about Greg, yeah. and then then I got then I catch them looking, I'm like. Yeah, yeah, no, you hate them. Trust me, and I know look, we're all the same. I, species. We're all the same I, species, man. I once befriended a woman that I knew from online, um, and and we were we we were cool. Mm. Started talking on the phone eventually, and that was like after I broke up with my ex and everything. Started talking on the phone and everything. And when you when you're single, you can do whatever the hell you want. When I'm in a relationship, I don't chill with women like that. I don't. Yeah. I I might speak to them. I might. We might hit each other via text on some cordial shit, of mm. course, um, or whatever. Social media, blah blah blah. But it's always cordial. I'm not mm. gonna disrespect my relationship. But when I'm not in a relationship anymore, I can do whatever the hell I want. So yeah, absolutely. We hung out and everything. We chilled and stuff. And it was all friendly. But um, this is why I had to say that guys do it and women do it too. Yeah. Eventually, she let it be known she was interested yeah. in me. And I told her like, yeah, well, I just got out of my relationship. And, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, I'll, I'll be no good to you. And, you Don't know, because my mind is And now you're a dog. And, um, <laughs> no, she didn't know. No, I'm laughing at Javi. And now you're a dog. <laughs> Well, that, I've seen that, it happen. Yeah, that 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 can happen, but it didn't happen with me. It was uh, just like I just didn't like. I get it. Maybe she wasn't comfortable enough to just tell me 
that up front, but the fact that she kind of do it, she 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 did it on the sly. Mm-hmm. It kind of felt like I, that's the thing I don't like. Yeah. Like, don't don't pretend to be all cool and everything, you know. And then all of a sudden, boom! Like you wanted you wanted more, but shit. I ended up. She was a a nice. She was a very nice chick, but I ended up not taking her up on you know that interest because she ended up. You, I know it sounds stupid, but she was on my ex's radar at the time. Mm. And I did not want to give my ex the satisfaction. Oh, I get it. Thinking, oh, she likes you, you know. She One likes, of those situations. Yeah, like, she, like, she, it was, like was kind of like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And she thought something was going on the whole time while we were in a relationship. Smart man, because you like, know you would have been in those You would have been in those group chats. You would. Your name would have been all over those group chats. Yeah, I mean, but people are going to say what they want to yeah. say, but I, I don't... I mean, I don't have a reason to make it up, but they're gonna think what they want to think. But that's hundred percent true. You know, yeah. guys, we deal with it too, where we're like we're we're faithful to our women, the mm. the guys who are faithful to our women, mm. and then we have opportunities. We mm-hmm. all have opportunities. We all deal with temptation. Yep. Because some of the women that come at us are fine. Yep. Some of them are fine, and they probably wouldn't say shit if you, you know, you wanted to risk it all with them. But, you know. It's not. It's it's really not worth it. If you got something good at home, it's not worth it. But that's something. It's not just women who have to deal with it. I know women like to say, "Oh well, we turn guys down all the time. Why can't y'all do the same?" Yo, we turn women down all the time too. We may See, they, not. They be, used to those ashy, those ashy dudes that you know what I'm saying that, yeah. that stay in the friend zone, like and and it, you don't even. Ha- I'm not even trying to say like you have to be like freaking Greg level here, right? Like as long yeah. as you, you know, as long as you're just a normal human being somebody's going to be attracted to you, right? And it's mm-hmm. going to be an opportunity for you to either accept it or reject it. Mm-hmm. Male or female, right? Like, uh, <laughs> so, we answered that question, right? Yeah, yeah very detailed. Yeah, we, um, we <clears throat> You're welcome. And I quote, Why do you lie? Even over simple shit. Why do you date women you know you're not ready for on the same page with? Knowing you can only keep it keep the front up for so long, man. Men <laughs> lie, women lie. <laughs> everybody fucking lies. Yeah. It, that, that's... For one, every. Well, let me not say everybody. No. I know everybody Ev- tells a lie. Everybody, but lies. only everybody. certain people lie habitually. I know, and you know what? I'm not even into zodiac signs, yeah. but the. The most I've known, two or three pathological liars my yeah. whole life. Yeah. All Gemini's. All Gemini's. All of them. Path- like you, you my- hear that black rabbit? He coming at you. <laughs> I see. You see Gemini? Yeah. Oh, but you know, I say female too. Yeah. Female. I can think of one female Gemini that I can't. Honestly, I, I don't know her to be a liar. But other than that. When they when they ended up being pathological liars, they just happen to be female yeah. and Gemini's. Well, I'm gonna be fair. I'm gonna I'm gonna be the the contrarian in this in this conversation, right? Men do lie, right? Mm-hmm. But I think that there are some social pressures that cause that, right? And I'm I'm going to, I'm I'm going by the conversations I'm hearing around this whole situation. Yeah. It's like you want a guy, or some women want a lot of women want a guy that can take care of them, right? Take them out on expensive dates, whatever, whatever, right? Yeah. And there's a lot of men that are gonna put up. They're gonna put up that front, even if they don't have the money, right? Yep. They're gonna spend their whole check taking you to like a fancy steakhouse, fancy Italian dinner, just to impress you, right? Mm-hmm. You know, blow their whole bank account on like a couple of outfits that impress you, or buy you mm-hmm. a bag or something like that first month, two months. Yeah. yeah. That shit's not sustainable for a lot of people. It's not. It's not sustainable. So eventually, they're gonna have to come to reality. And you're either going to be honest about it and say, like, yo, I, I really don't have this. I don't, I, I can't provide the things that you expect me to provide. Or you're going to lie about it. You're going to be like, oh, I can't go out tonight because I got to take care of my sick grandmother or whatever, right? Like, and then eventually these lies are going to, you're going to have to keep up with these lies, blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. And women, they got that intuition, right? And over time, they're going to they're gonna be like, oh, why is this guy lying to me? And then it's going to create more suspicion. Like, what else is he lying about? Blah, 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 blah. And then it creates, like, this whole, like, just... 
I don't know. I, it, it's not something I deal with because I'm. We all game. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm out the game, and even before, I, shit, I was honest. Yeah, I didn't lie. So like, I, yeah, I, I ain't got it. I ain't got it. <laughs> I mean, but it, it, whatever, whatever. I'm not even gonna talk about that. But I think that I think there's something to it. But I think the reason why um, that that question is posed, and why a lot of women ask that question, is just like I think there's there's a lot expected. From men, especially nowadays, I think people look at people look at like my relationship, and they don't see the arguments, and they don't mm-hmm. see the frustrations, and they don't see whatever. All they see is like, oh, you know, he loves his wife, she loves him, blah blah blah. I want that, and they look at they look at somebody. That, don't look at people that have been married for a decade as as the ideal for your dating relationship. It's not realistic. That, that, you got to build that shit up, right? So. You got to. Yeah. It just you just got to build it up, and then if you if you don't, if you try to start. From what you perceive us to be, right? It's not sustainable, and then it's all gonna seem like a lot. Like me and my wife have been together. I hope that makes sense. It does. Me and my yeah. wife have been together for thirteen years. We've been married for five. Yeah. Um, we still argue. We still, we still like getting heated debates. We uh-huh. still have these issues, but like I honestly can honestly say debates. that like mm-hmm. <laughs> no, sometimes yeah. they're, 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 there's a difference between arg- heated arguments, yeah. heated debates, and argument. You and Valky would be debating heated. <sighs> We would. That's just, it's just how we are. Yeah. Um, but I think the one thing about it is, like, I um, come to terms with us individually, like, her dealing with what she, whatever she has going on and me dealing with all my many mental health issues has helped us um, come together. Mm. We still get mad. We, I still say stupid shit, thinking it's, thinking it's funny. You know what I mean? And she's just like, you know, that really hurt. Maria will say, um, Valkyrie will say some things that's just kind of like, that may hurt my feelings, that she may not understand, and I say something to her, in, in like, you know, in retort. So we're still learning, like, relationships, you're going to be, I honestly don't think that a relationship works if you don't learn from each other mm-hmm. consistently as you go on. Like, I love the fact that I can still make my wife laugh. That's one of the, that's one of my favorite things in the world, is to mm-hmm. genuinely say, say something to her that makes her happy, that makes mm-hmm. her laugh, or buying gifts that, like, like she's like, oh my god, I can't believe you do that. Like I try not to. Like I got electronics two years in a row, no electronics this year. Um, I used to get her um, the uh, Pandora bracelets every year for Christmas and for her birthday. Mm-hmm. I don't do it anymore. Yeah. Like you know what I mean. And like I may go back to it, but because we kind of like switch things up and stuff like that, it keeps the relationship fresh. Yeah. So when someone goes like, oh, I look at you, I was like, dog, we go through it. Yeah. We absolutely go through. We got into an argument this morning over something stupid. Yeah. Probably but, like, yo, you left the mayonnaise jar slightly ajar. It was something like that. Something, 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 something like but that. But anything crazy, right? But, you, like, yeah. but like, I took, but like, you know what I mean? And I said something in a retort that I shouldn't have. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I said, but I did what I had to do. I came back up and we were fine. It, like, you know yeah, what I mean? Like, yeah. it's, but that shit takes work. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's the problem with a lot of relationships. People don't want to put the work in for it. And I noticed that a lot with like this. It with not, I shouldn't say this generation, but with people now with relationships, they think that that shit's all gonna be like a romantic comedy where in two hours your relationship's fine. But it's like, nah, dog. Even in the fucking romantic comedies, that shit's weeks, months, years into the shit. It's like, yo, yeah. this microwave generation doesn't. Re- I shouldn't say it's microwave generation, but people who feel that like they're owed something. Because they put quote unquote the work in, it don't work like it. It, it doesn't you're, end you're up like that. You're constantly working. Yo, like I, me and you have had this conversation yeah. about the podcast, and I'm just like, yo, how come I'm not doing these numbers? How come da 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 da? And, and you've always reminded me, you're not that person. Mm-hmm. I don't have the same type of connections other person does. Mm-hmm. I've had this conversation with you back when I was super insecure, like, yo, how come this person gets to work there? And Greg would flood. I'm like, did you apply for the job? Mm-hmm. The fuck are you mad about for <laughs> that? You know what I mean? So like I there's things that go into it and I just like when it's like when people and back to bring it all back, like when people lie and they do stuff like that, you're doing yourself a disservice. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? If you're not being genuine, the genuine person of who you are, like you said, yeah. that shit's gonna come back to you when it's just like, Well, you were doing this before, yeah. why can't you do it anymore? Yeah. So I think that Men lie the way they do, while well, some men lie mm. the way they do, out of pure selfishness. Yeah, that's another. Thing. That's that's yeah. the yeah. main benefit. Yeah. People lie for benefit. 
So it's it's mainly selfishness. Guys will lie about, you know, where they work, how much money they mm-hmm. make, um, whether they have a girl or not. Uh, whether know, they had sex with a certain girl or not. Yeah, or like... You know what brand sneaker, what brand they wear, or you know what, like just random stuff. They'll lie about whatever. Like they said, they'll lie about the smallest things that don't even matter. I understand that, and that's usually because they're trying to benefit. That's really the only reason to lie is to benefit and to manipulate people. I will add. I will yes, add one thing, right? Yes, and yes, and yes, think for yes. the most part, mm-hmm. lying, lying is a negative, right? Yeah. But selfishness isn't necessarily negative. In my book, sometimes when I look at selfishness, I look at it as, as human nature, right? Yeah. So I think, like, you could have a lie. You could lie about your job, yeah. right? Or you could lie about, say, oh, um, I don't know. Like, I, I can't even think of a white lie, to be honest with you. But there's, there's, some, there's some lies that weigh more than others, right? And yeah, I think absolutely. Sometimes, sometimes the lie happens when you're trying to impress somebody, mm-hmm. right? when you don't have the confidence in yourself, mm-hmm. right? When you don't think that what you have is enough. So you, you're really feeling this girl, like you, you're you seeing this girl, like, like I want to be with her. You can't even believe that she's giving you the time of day, right? And you're like, yo, I can't fuck this up. I fucked up my last three relationships because uh-huh. I was a bum or whatever. I felt, mm-hmm. even if you're not a bum, you're feeling it, right? So I'm just going to impress her. And you're going to impress her, you're going to work hard, you're going to put in overtime, you can do all this shit, right? Mm-hmm. But then it might be that one lie. That you that you that you that you that you that you say right to impress her, right? Mm-hmm. Not knowing that you didn't need to lie because she's fit. She's if a girl's giving you her time, if anybody is giving you their time, they they, they like you. Mm-hmm. They're feeling you. You don't got to lie. That's true. Right? You can't get. You cannot. Well, get but, that's, but, yeah, but, that's yeah. but I think that's manipulation. Yeah, it, it yeah, is. yeah. It, it is. is. It, it is. Because exactly exactly yeah, if it you're lying is. to a chick that you're yeah. feeling, even if you froze in the moment and told the lie, yeah. You still committed an act yeah. of manipulation because you yeah. said it based on what you think her they, reaction. Yeah. Yes. It's whack, yes, and it'll yes, get yes, you. Yes, in a, in, yes. in a, it's whack, and I would not fault the woman for not wanting to fuck with you once she found out that you lie. Mm-hmm. But I guess what I'm trying to say it's also in my. It's also rational. I can understand. I wouldn't personally mm-hmm. do it, but I can understand. To, I guess to answer the question, like mm-hmm. why do people lie, right? Yeah. Like it's complicated. Right, and one of the it, it sometimes, I think now. So in a long term, like in my relationship, right, if I do lie to my wife, right, I try not to lie to my wife, right. Yeah. But whatever, people are human, things happen, right. Whatever. I haven't done this. I, actually, I don't think I have lied to my wife. Be very careful. Yeah, yeah I'm trying to think. I'm, I'm trying to. <laughs> With I, what I, you're I, about I, to say. I, I'm just trying to be fair, right. But I think I, I'm not gonna but, lie. I, I have I have 100 percent lied to my wife. But probably little things. I'm trying to think like, oh, I did. I, I, I got a Sunday. Like I bought a bought some ice cream, even though she wants me to like, you know, drink some protein shakes or yeah. some shit. But I got like an ice nah, cream. I didn't like, get, I get, I get Uber Eats. What are you talking about? I didn't do that, right? So okay, <laughs> like, you know what? I've also, I've never, but I also kind of define uh, Greg. Check your text. Check your text message. You'll see one of the lines I've actually told. Um, oh shit! I'm not telling you. Uh, <laughs> But um, there are some lies that I've told that have been big, but like I don't even, I don't even know if they can be categorized as big, but some things are just like I don't think need to be said. Yeah. Um. And yes, yes, an admission of truth is a lie. <laughs> like you know what I mean? If people like if you don't tell somebody something, knowing that they're gonna have a negative Ooh, reaction, I get to that, where you going with this? Like there, yeah. that that is a lie. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? Like let, let's just call it like it is. That is a fucking lie. So you know? why do you think? Men, as women like to say it on social media, men have the tendency to disturb women and disturb women's peace and entertain women that they're not quote unquote ready for. (laughs) All right. Okay. 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 Um, I hate that. I hate that so um, much, bro. It sounds so arrogant, oh, right? Doesn't it? It, 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 oh, it, it, shit. It, it, but here's it, the it's thing. It's arrogant as fuck. Yeah. I, I, let me, here's the thing. And a lot of women I love say that. In but. some situations, yeah. and I don't mean to sound like... Uh, <laughs> Hold on. I don't mean to sound like like I'm on the women's side, yeah. but I don't hear it spoken about enough. Hmm. When... When it comes when it comes to the, difference, the, the differences between men and women... Yeah. Generally, men don't have a biological clock, and women do. 
once they start to hit their 30s, 35, that's dangerous territory if they're considering having children in the future. So they don't have as much time to play around and grow as, and to grow and to settle down as we as men do. So I do think it's important, and it's not spoken spoken about enough, that once women start to reach, you know, you know, north of like 26, 27, they have less time to play with, and guys should actually try to acknowledge that. Yeah. So if you meet, if you're uh, whatever age you are as a man, and you meet a woman who's 31, who has no kids, who's, you know you know, just getting into her career or well into her career and everything and told you, I want to get married one day, I want to have children. And he knows for a fact that he's not even close to that. I don't think they would be a good match going forward because he has plenty of time to figure out if he wants children or not. He has plenty of time to decide if that's even the woman he wants to be with going forward. But she doesn't have the same amount of time. So in that respect, I'll respect that. I'll respect that if a woman is th- um, 29, if a wo- woman is, especially if she's like 34, 35, saying, yeah. listen, I don't have time to play with these guys. I have a place I want to be in the near future, and I need a guy who's ready to meet me there Absolutely. around that time. Fuck it. But that's the crazy Absolutely. part about it for me is that I know plenty of men at in, in their 30s, yeah. right, that are ready for that, 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 that have their shit together, yeah. right, mm-hmm. but are also single. Or, yeah. or, or, or available. And I know plenty of women, same situation. But then I don't, they don't, they don't meet for some reason. Like, I don't, mm-hmm. I don't, again, I'm not in the game, so I don't really know what's causing this issue. But it seems like people are constantly meeting the wrong people. I think and I don't I, understand why that's the case. Like, um, I don't get it. I think there's a lot that goes into that. Yeah. Um, actually, you know what? I'm just going to say it like this, and I'm, I'll simplify it. It's just literally how it works and how it goes. Mm. Think about all the times, like, all the people that... Well, you're a little... Actually, no. We can use you for it. You and your wife. Mm. Think of all the things that had to happen for the planets to align or whatever you want to call it for you two to be become romantically involved. Well, You've yeah. known each other forever. Yeah. Like... Yeah, yeah. true. The, and, I thought, and I thought about this... We I were mean, friends. Like, and that's the thing. Like, me and my wife, we were, like... Friends mm-hmm. before we even got romantic, right? And then we were romantic for a while. Then we stopped. Mm-hmm. We were still friends. And then, like, it was just... Then we got engaged and we got married, right? Like, it was just, like, a, a very long-term courting situation. Duh, that happened, me, right? like, mm-hmm. you remember me and, me and both... It was funny because on both ends, both me and my now wife just wanted to fuck. Mm. That was all it was. When we initially mm-hmm. met each other, all, that's, we, all we wanted to do was The oldest love story of, of, of yeah. all time. In everything, and it's funny because, like, I don't, you know, the age old question, what would you go back and change in your life yeah. if you could, blah, blah, blah. I been, that's, that's been something that's weighed heavy on my heart recently and on my mind. And I think about things that would change, but it's like, if I change this, I don't meet my wife. Yeah. If I change this, me and my best friend don't have the relationship that we do. If I change this, the two people in the room, I may not have even met either one of you. Like, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. So there's a lot of things that go into, like, changing your life, you know what I mean? So it's like, why, if your life is, like, I understand if you're, like, homeless on the street or you're just in a in a really unfortunate situation. Mm-hmm. My life isn't bad. Am I making six figures a year? No. But I'm at a point right now where my wife goes, you know you can buy stuff for yourself if you want. I'm like, I buy comic books. Mm-hmm. What I do? Like, that's, you know what I mean? That's like, crazy. And, and the build up, the build up to that situation. So when I was in, like, if I was in school, I was married throughout going back to school mm-hmm. and that like super struggle phase I can't pay to get the heat on because I but I'm still having I still have three jobs plus a full time student and I, but I just don't have any money because I'm paying for books and all this other shit right I'm at a point now both me and my wife where we're making good money together mm-hmm. right so but even if I even just me alone I'm making decent money mm-hmm. if I was single I probably would be considered ready for certain 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 women whatever, yeah. right yeah but it took a long time for me to get to that like mm-hmm. I have to, and I work. I was working really hard. I think I probably was the type of person they were talking about that that, that might be ready for them. But if they saw me and the way I was living and mm-hmm. how I was struggling, they wouldn't give me the time of day, right? Yeah. So it's like, are you willing? Are you willing 
to wait for somebody to be ready, right? Even like, is that, is that, I'm not, is no, that fair you, to even ask? No, because you know that, like, that comes down to the whole thing where you hear, if you don't like me at my worst, you don't accept me at my best. That works both ways. It does, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like, my wife was around me when, for years, she made more money than I did. Mm-hmm. It's just the way it was, but like, we, neither one of us ever, she never looked at me as a, as a what's the word, a broke boy? Yeah. She never looked at me like that because I made her life as as happy as possible. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? It doesn't necessarily mean her buying her like it was swinging that brick dirt. A swinging yonder. <laughs> so like perfect example. One day it was like Val- it was around Valentine's Day and she goes, I go, Hey, do you want I'm about to leave work, do you want anything? She goes, Oh, get me chocolate. I bought her a one pound bar of fucking uh one par no, a five pound Hershey bar. Mm-hmm. And she goes, Really? But she laughed. Hmm. Something as simple as that changes the dynamic of things, and it's like, but again, I wasn't making a lot of fucking money, but I worked a lot of overtime to to make that. Hmm. Now I make more than she does, and I'm not looking at her like, oh, you're broke and blah blah blah. I'm actually kind of honored that like I can be in a position to make sure her life's okay yeah. while she's going through school. Yeah. Like for me, that for me, that's an honor. Like you know, what yeah. I mean? And I, I've heard a lot of women say that they don't want they don't want to, women and men say that they don't want somebody. Um, that they have to build up, right? You don't have to build up anybody, right? But you, but I think that, I think you, people miss out on a lot of good opportunities by looking at somebody on the come up mm-hmm. and thinking they're not ready or not worthy when that person could be perfect for you, right? Mm-hmm. That, that person, yo, like some of the hardest working people I know, right? Some of the best people I know are struggling, right? Mm-hmm. Because they're trying to accomplish their goals. Imagine mm-hmm. all the people who didn't, who looked at Jay Z and were just like, "Oh, he's a broke boy. He's never gonna fucking survive," mm-hmm. or like all the people who look at whoever the whoever the celebrity of the of the week is, and it's just like, "Oh, how many people are kicking themselves because it's like you're never gonna mm-hmm. amount to shit." Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? You just don't want to get embarrassed in the group chat. You don't want your girls to talk shit about the person you're with, or you don't want your yeah. boys to talk shit about the person. But you're I, with. but I'm also one of those people. One of those people. Like, I try my best not to like. Bad mouth my significant other like there we go through a lot of shit but yeah. again like that's just how it is like you know what I mean and like there are moments where I'm like what the fuck but like you know what I mean I think I don't really I, I agree with the, the twenty eighty rule that's great but I really if on a more on a much easier scale when does the good outweigh when does the bad outweigh the good is where you start to really have like problems and things of that nature yeah. Yeah. it really depends on where your values lie yeah um. I think when guys, quote unquote, waste women's time, um, uh, I think some guys, going back, some guys just need to try to be more honest. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. I understand. I may not agree with it, but I understand why they might put up the front or manipulate or lie. Because at the end of the day, a lie or to manipulate means you're just trying to benefit from a situation. I understand, you know, she might be real attractive, you're trying to add her to your collection, or you're trying to, you know, have sexy time with her and be able to look back at those, you know, good old times or whatever. I get it. But, you know, if you know you're not ready for that, don't put somebody else through that. If you know yeah. that's what she's about, relationship, long-term, all this other stuff, and you're not really about that, you're just trying to sleep with somebody you find yeah. attractive, and then if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Then, you know, I get it. Yeah. Don't don't waste her time. I, no, I, it's, you just, I think the same way guys should do that self-reflection mm. and figure out what they want to do, I think women should do the same thing because... It's not a one-way street. It's not. I at think all. women know. I think women do know if a guy is really like, if he's really the one, if he's really worth um, investing time yeah. in. Absolutely. But a lot of times they let their their feelings get in the way of making those proper assessments. Is it, to to jump off of that a little bit, I think that. I think you're 100 percent right. Like honesty is key, and, and and like I said before, men do lie because of these societal pressures. But mm-hmm. like you say, like you don't have to. Like and, and if a woman if a woman's into you, like there's a lot of women out there doing their thing. Like they're yeah. budgeting, mm-hmm. you know, they're they're investing in stocks. Like they they getting their degrees, and a lot of them they just want somebody that they can be with. And, and you know what I'm saying? So yo, smell good. You know, mm-hmm. take care of yourself. Be disciplined. 
You know what I mean? Like, show that you're working towards something, right? Have some ambition. Mm-hmm. And you don't have to lie about shit. You know what I'm saying? If you don't have it, you don't have it. Some women, obviously, like, all, all human beings are assholes. And they, they're going to treat you mm-hmm. like shit if they don't yeah. think you're at a certain level. Mm-hmm. But I think for the most part, a lot of a lot of people will look at you for who you are. And uh-huh. if you're honest about yourself, and you got you, and, and wherever you are in life, if you're on point for whatever you are in life, whether you're a broke student or you're mm-hmm. making six figures as a lawyer or something, right? As long as you you know if you're on point for that position in your life, you're gonna find some. It, it's and gonna be also, easier for you to find something. Let's also not act like. So we're using this as a financial thing, but like, yeah. but we should also recognize that like when people talk about, are you ready? It's not always a financial thing. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. just because you're financially stable doesn't necessarily mean that you're ready or able mm-hmm. to have a relationship. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? you got to be mentally prepared for the things that come with it. And you're still going to fuck up. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? One person wants kids now, the next person doesn't. Uh, you're both ready to have kids, but are you both emotionally ready for what comes with that? Because uh, you've heard the story a million times. Kids change the situation. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's for the good. Sometimes it's for the worse. Like, you know what I mean? And, some, and, like, you know, a lot of times, like, it can bring people together. Sometimes it don't work like that. Um, hey, I have a goal I want to go through. Uh, I have something that I want to... Let's take this podcast, for example. Mm-hmm. My wife's been super supportive. Like, you know what I mean? Sometimes it is annoying when I'm podcasting longer than I want, than, like, I expected to. Mm-hmm. But she's like, you know, you're doing your thing. Like, you know what I mean? And there are times where it's like, I'm on my laptop, and she's come to me and been like, hey, um... I don't really get, a, I don't get to see you a lot, you know, can you put your laptop away, and whatever, she goes, at, and she understands that I'm working towards something, but she's also kind of like, yo, I matter too, yeah. so it isn't just a financial thing that I think people, when they say, um, when the person who um, wrote in said, if you're not ready for a relationship, then say it, and you said something about this, you said something similar to this earlier when we were talking about um, friends and stuff like that, mm-hmm. like being honest with someone right up front, like that's a huge deal. If you're not, if someone says to you, I've said this on the show before, first date, my wife, do you want kids? Absolutely not. Good. Neither do I. Problem solved. Mm-hmm. Every so often she'd be like, are you sure? And I'd be like, yeah, still good. Mm-hmm. Me, are you sure? Yeah, I'm still good. Cool. We're both older. Hey, it's safer for you to get a vasectomy. Me. Cool. No problem. And people will still go, and I hear people go, you're, you're not a man if you have a vasectomy. It's like my dick. <laughs> like, how am I not a man, dog? Because I don't want, because I, one, I don't want to have kids. And two, I apologize, I apologize for saying that to you. <laughs> and two, when people are just kind of like, oh, well, you know, like, fuck you. Like, you know what I mean? Like, who are you to tell, <clears throat> to quote Fav, who are you to tell me how to, who are you telling me how to judge myself? Why don't you practice safe sex and go fuck yourself? Jeez. Yeah. So, next question. All right. <laughs> All right. Next question. This is a good one. When you publicly or privately ask with buddies, sexualize women, do you ever regret it? No, because women sexualize men, women sexualize women. Men sexualize men, men sexualize women. It's what people do. I don't wear gray sweatpants pants in public for a reason. Dog, I don't either. Yeah, like that shit was just... What's the wait? So what's that question again? Do you feel bad for ever sexualizing women? No, I don't at all. I don't because, for one, I usually keep that shit to myself. I was gonna say I sexualize women all the time, but it's no, but I think it's like, it's like, like to your, it's like yeah. to your friends. Like though. we might have okay, we have a group chat that's that I kicked that's been of. going for <laughs> that's been going Fair. for like. What the past two or three years? Club de Messieurs. where we just share sexy ass photos of women online, not women we know in person, but online. Yeah, that's the most sexualization that I participate in. Yeah, openly. I'm not like I'm not like thirst trapping women. Or yeah, like, like shit like that. But I, I'm also not one of those dudes who's like, and I think she's talking about like your exes. I don't over sexualize my exes. I don't. Like you know what I mean? I what, may, I may, I, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Yeah. I may talk about it among my close group of friends. Yeah. But like my wife, none of my friends know about that because none yeah. of their fucking business. Like you know what I mean? But like, you know what I mean? If like, look, all right, bust this. I walk around 
in a sleeveless jersey. I have nice arms, tattooed, you're looking cool. I'm fine with that. I had my dick grabbed one day when I was in shorts. Mm. That shit was wild uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And someone thought that shit was funny. Well, now you know how we feel. Yo. I ain't never grabbed a pussy in my life. Yo, at no point have I ever just been (laughs) that guy that's randomly grab a fucking crotch on the fucking train. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like, it's like, you're coming at me with something. It's like, I was legitimately hurt. Like, I don't wear basketball shorts in public anymore because of that moment. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? And then to be attacked, it's like... And it's like, if you know me, you know who I am. And you're coming at me with that, dog. Re-fucking-lax. So, so they were talking about exes? Huh? I think that's what it was coming... I think it was coming down. Because it, 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 it said um, exes. So, I'm assuming that's what they were talking about. I don't know, man. Like, I thought I, they... Go ahead. Yes, yeah, it says I, ex with buddies. We what? Like, me and my, me and my example friends... Example with buddies? That's oh, yeah. I think it was examples. example with example with buddies. Okay. Okay. Well, here's the thing. I've noticed in today's climate, women sexualize themselves more than men do, because you have OnlyFans. Unless you're you have, Not Tiger. you have, who's the dude who's um, who yeah. the OnlyFans? Is, is, is yeah, Tiger? Tiger. Yeah, you have OnlyFans. You have just random women who like to twerk, just because you know the wind is blowing. Mm. You have like, if I go through my timeline, I don't have a bunch of holes on my timeline. Yeah, I don't. I don't even follow, like, that many models like that on Instagram yeah, like yeah, that yeah. anymore. But I can always find women showing off their tits, bending over, Actually, doing all this way. other stuff. And these aren't, like, models or anything. These are just regular chicks who want to thirst trap. Yeah. Women over-sexualize themselves. Yeah. Specifically, for the, uh, specifically for money, likes, attention. Because attention, attention is a drug. I'm gonna be honest. With you, I don't see that. I, I agree with you. Mm-hmm. I don't. But and I'm not saying you're seeing this as a negative. Yeah. I don't. Like you guys know. Like I'm not the type of person to like share. Like I'm not. I don't really do that. Like really with my people. Like I don't. When I talk, I don't mm-hmm. really talk about. Like oh who like that. Javi Javi is essentially shaming me because I me and Lavelle share porn. Well, I'm not, <laughs> not shaming you. I'm fucking with you. I'm, I'm just like yo. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be honest with you. Like I like. I don't see anything wrong with sexualizing. I don't, depending on the definition, I don't know what the def, definition they're using, but the definition I'm using, looking at people that you're attracted to in a sexual way in your mind, I don't see nothing wrong with that. Like with the like, there's really, there's nothing wrong with yeah, that. At you're, all. You're, women are sexy. Yeah, you're going to, to find me, them sexually yeah. attractive. There's nothing wrong with that. I think as long a, as you're you're not disturbing anybody with your sexualization, exactly, yeah. it's, it shouldn't be an issue. Yeah, like, yeah. if I'm on the train, I'm not just, like, eye-goggling a woman because it makes them... Because that's super uncomfortable and I would never want them to feel a certain way for it. But if I'm going to be completely honest, if a woman comes up with a low-cut blouse and I happen to look, oh, nice tits. Oh, I'm oh, not, but I'm not going to be like, You're not oh. going to say that. I'm not going to say <laughs> it, nor am I going to, like, ogle over them because that's yeah. kind of... It's, it's, it's creepy. It's, Yes, and yeah. I never want to be that creepy guy. Yeah, like yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. There's a there. There are certain ways around it. Like if I'm wearing a certain thing, if I'm wearing, like the first time I get to actually go out and do something, mm-hmm. Doug, I'm gonna look fucking fantastic. Mm-hmm. And yes, I want you to look at me. Mm-hmm. Fun fact, man, woman, if they say, "Yo, you look good," I feel good about that. Mm-hmm. Fuck it, like I, I feel good about that. Mm-hmm. Like you know what I mean? I sometimes you sometimes you dress for yourself, and yes, sometimes. We all dress for other people for the compliments because, yes, it mm-hmm. feels good. Me and Greg have had this conversation a thousand times. Sometimes just knowing you can be is just as good. Mm. And honestly, like, and the thing is, I, I think it's cultural too. Like, I know a lot of guys, like, you guys, both of you guys know, like, um, or are or, or, or aware that, like, I grew up in a culture where, like, I guess people will consider the way women dress on certain occasions as being like too sexy. I guess, or like, like I'm used to seeing women with their titties out. Like, no. I, I'm just used. I, that's just what it is. Whatever, mm-hmm. right? You go to a club, you go to a party, you go to a carnival. My mom used to drag me like and or right? and like what's in Yeah, right? like so, it, it takes a lot for me to go like, oh, that shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. it's not. It, to me, it's regular. You should see the way my wife dress out dresses when she goes to the club or she goes to Trinidad. Or no, whatever, right? Like, yeah, you probably shouldn't. But, um, (laughs) so, again, I guess even that, that's in the eye of the beholder, right? Like, it's, 
and, and for somebody like me who grew up in that type of culture, even saying the term sexualizing somebody doesn't even make sense to me. Like it's just like, mm-hmm. oh, we're sexual creatures. If you if you have we're a body, you we are good. animals. If, if you look into yourself, like show that shit off, like whatever. If people are gonna look at it and they're gonna like it. Like whatever. Greg, you have a part of your body that you love, right? Yeah. Uh huh. You have a part of your body that you love, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so yeah, you're proud of that certain thing. Like, I'm proud of, like, certain things about my body. So, yeah. Not right now, because I'm fat as shit. Well, but... well, uh, well <laughs> dude, you know my fat state. Like, I'm kind of. Yeah, I've been working on myself lately, so. Yeah, you're yo, <laughs> stop, <laughs> yo, let me tell you. Greg, I, yo, Greg, might, Greg, might, Greg, might be the, Greg might be the link image. Yo, <laughs> yo, <laughs> yo, I, yo I he just, might be the sound called link image. Yo, yo, yo. I think it was either Terry yesterday. <laughs> I, 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 I heart emojied. One of your thirst trap pics on Instagram. Oh, well, great, right, right, right. I just heard emoji to do the 2013, 2014. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, this ain't gonna look good, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, Greg, I'm hit thirst. Yo, Greg, thirst trap. What's a thirst trap, though? Oh, shut so, the fuck up. Yeah, no, 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 no. Nigga. No, 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 Yo, no, no, hold on. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> fuck out of here. You are thirst trapping. Sick is like, yo. What the thirst trap? Did he really just ask what a thirst trap was? Shit, man, you made me. Yeah. I was like, damn, I, I saw that picture. I was like, damn, I, Duh, I, I saw that picture, I looked in the mirror, and did the thing with these <laughs> men, and then I'm like, <laughs> I was about to grab hey. one of Shanice's, like, little, them, them sexy girdle shit. Listen, I don't take any photos with the shirt off. I don't do anything extra. I just, shit, some of them are just. Pics I took at the gym. That's it. Yeah, don't get yeah, we're, we're fucking with you. Like, just for you, but that was a thirst yeah. trap. We hate, we're hating. Oh, yeah. Hate, 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 hate. hate. You know we are saying? definitely hating. We're hating with love. But I was I was actually proud of, like, the last joint. And, as you, sh- and as you should be. Yeah, like, yeah. and all jokes yeah. aside, like, you yeah. did, there, you, yeah. for, excuse me, for as long as I've known you, when you put your mind to something, you do it. And I, that's, that's, that's a, a quality, that's one of the qualities about you that, like, I really admire. You put your mind towards something, you're gonna fucking do it, and I admire that. I admire that part of you, but I'll also fuck you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, next question: Why do men refuse to firmly cut off exes, former hookup buddies, i.e., block them on social media, block phone numbers, etc., um, even when you're um, with the ones to end the relationship? Uh, usually, the surface response is not one to be rude slash mean. That's a cop out, and I don't buy it. I had to cut off all my exes. I'm just gonna say that. I'm married, so, yeah, man. My wife knows me. My wife doesn't, <laughs> my wife doesn't give a fuck at all, because she nah. knows I don't give a shit about it. My wife knows me, and she knows my exes, so. One ex I had to cut off completely, because she was still being very flirtatious. And I was just like, yeah. I'm, I'm too good. much of a flirt, man. I feel like, and I don't do it on purposely, but like I said, like, I, I it, it's not, I'm only saying that because I can't think of another term. Like, I'm a nice guy, yo. Like, I, I, if I talk to you, I talk to you, and I think some people, especially exes, Sometimes they get the wrong idea, and I don't even want that in my life right now, so I cut them off. I think that question is very triggering, Mm, mm. because I was recently in a situation... Oh, God, sorry, I didn't mean to My bad, bad. I'm sorry, I do. But I'm just going to say this. I'm just going to say this. I personally believe that your friends are your friends... Your exes are your exes. Once you enter a dating relationship with somebody, if you're ask if you expect that person to cut other people off, I think that's problematic. Hmm. Especially if it's just based on a title, you don't have any necessary like like examples as to why this person needs to be cut off. Other than the fact that they're an ex or somebody they they used to mess with, mm. I'm not telling everybody how to do their relationship, but I'm somebody I know boundaries, and yep. that goes back to the first question where I have female friends who can vouch for me who said who can say that Greg's never tried me, mm-hmm. Greg's never you know tried to sleep with me or flirted with me or whatever. We've been friends all this time. I've cut off dudes because they couldn't keep it to themselves or keep their hands to themselves, but Greg's not one of them. I have women who can vouch for me. But because I have that certain amount of discipline and I trust that I have that certain amount of discipline, I expect the person that I'm with to trust me just as well. So if I have, I've been, like I said, my last relationship, 
my ex had issues with me having female friends and um, being in contact with, with an ex. Okay, if you feel that way, cool. But the biggest issue I had with it was that she did too. She, she was in contact with her exes. Exes or ex, either ex or or um, people she used to be with yeah. more than friends. Yeah. I can't really say exes, but I think there was an instance where there was an ex or whatever, brief contact, whatever. But there was at least a person or two that she's had in history with, a history with, that she was in constant contact with. But me being me, I'm a trust. I'm someone who's big on trust and respect. If I enter a relationship with you, it's because I trust you. So if you have an ex that you speak with, I, honestly, and I know it might sound, might, sound, might sound weird, I don't give a fuck. Mm. I don't care if you're, if me, if I'm in a relationship with you, it's because I've already evaluated you enough to the point where I can trust you, and I, sh- and I would know how you would respond if an ex, mm. a male friend, shit, a female friend, or some random dude on the street approached you on a level that might threaten our relationship. I already assume that you're going to handle that and protect our relationship. So if I'm not worried about you and it ain't, it doesn't matter what your ex says. It doesn't matter what the guy on the street says. It doesn't matter what your guy friend says. I'm concerned with what, with how you respond to it when they say it. That right there. That's my only concern. So, if I meet somebody and we're dating and they're like, oh, by the way, um, there's an ex that I'm still cool with for, and we've been cool for years. Okay, cool. As long as you know how to have boundaries, as long as you know how to carry yourself um, in conversation with them, I don't care. I'm not going to check your phone. I'm not going to constantly ask who's this, who's that, blah, blah, blah. Do what you want. But at the same time, the reason why I do that is because I believe in people having autonomy. I believe in people having a social life outside of what we have in our relationship. And I also believe in when you allow people as much freedom as they need to be who they are, they're going to do everything with the with genuine intention. So if they if you give them enough freedom, they're going to do everything with their honest intention to the point where if this person is doing things that, that strengthens the relationship, it's because they intend to. You give them the freedom to. If you if you make them if you're all insecure and you're scared that, you know, you know, they're gonna step out on the relationship, so you put all these parameters and restrictions and stuff, they might abide by it for a while, but you don't know what their true intentions are. You're constantly gonna wonder if they wanna cross that line. You know I, I get that. And I, I agree with that a lot. Like I'm not, I'm 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 the opposite of a jealous. I I, I can't get jealous. For me, like even if oh. I think about like my wife ever cheating on me or yeah. whatever, it's like oh well shit. I guess she never really loved me anyways, right? Like that's like so I get that. But I think that a lot of women, in particular, are insecure when it comes to those types of situations. And I think for a lot of a lot of times it's for good reason. I think a lot of women. A lot of, again, I, I, I don't want to seem like I'm just trying to bad mouth. I'm just going to get this wrong. I don't want to mm-hmm. seem like I'm bad mouthing men or whatever, but I think a lot of women, they've been through some shit when it comes to mm-hmm. relationships, right? They've been cheated on, they've been lied to, and all the mm-hmm. other stuff. And like, these, this, this shit genuinely happens mm-hmm. for a lot of complex reasons. So I think a lot of women, when you, especially if you meet them at a certain age, mm-hmm. they're coming in with the expectation that, like, yo, it's very possible that this guy's going to cheat on me. So they, they do have that insecurity, and I think. You know, if you really fuck for a lot of people, if you really fuck with that 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 young lady that you that you want to be with, right? Like mm-hmm. sometimes you, like for me, my wife never asked me to stop talking to my exes explicitly, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. But I just I under we were friends before. Mm-hmm. She knew the relationship I had. Like she mm-hmm. was around when I was with some of my exes. Yeah. Right. And I could see some of that insecurity, right? Like it's not she was the same shit, whatever. But I I I know my wife. Yeah. So it's, I understood how I was making her feel. But she so, didn't have to say it. She did it. I sometimes, just did it on my own. Yeah. Sometimes sometimes if you see it makes them uncomfortable, yeah. if you see if if you see it makes them act funny, yeah. It's not about them saying 
well, I want you to stop talking to X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Sometimes the fact that they they have that they show how they feel about it, because you don't have to always say stuff to express it. Yeah. Sometimes mm-hmm. your your reaction is your reaction says enough. Yeah. So I just I just feel like me personally, I'm not gonna tell anybody who they can and can't speak yeah. to. I should be able to trust you enough to do what you need to do to yeah. protect our relationship. Yeah, facts. If you're with somebody, you're supposed to be able to trust them. You're supposed to be able to respect them. Mm-hmm. If they're with you, they're supposed to be able to trust you and respect you. Mm-hmm. If they can't do that, if you're with somebody you don't trust, you should not be with them. Facts. Point yeah. blank, yeah. period. Yeah, facts. It saves everybody yeah. trouble. It saves me trouble. It saves you trouble. It saves... It just makes things easier. And plus, also, when you give people that proper freedom you're also giving them plenty of rope yeah. to hang themselves yeah. and it stresses you out less yeah you know, because yeah. like i said yeah. when you're giving them that freedom you yeah. see how people want to act yeah. when they're given the freedom to act yep. and a lot of times if they really had secret intentions that they didn't want you to know about they're gonna, they're gonna, gonna get sloppy yeah yep. yep. they're gonna get sloppy oh, they're he's gonna, not paying attention yeah he's not yeah, yeah he's yeah, not yeah, paying yeah. attention i can do this i yeah, can do yeah, that yeah, yeah. And then they're gonna trip up and they're gonna hang themselves. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. that's that's why I prefer to move that way. Mm-hmm. I don't have if I'm with somebody, I'm with somebody. I may not have always felt this way, mm-hmm. but I'm much more mature now. Mm-hmm. I've been this way for at least five or six years now. So I just like you get more mature, you realize you know what? I don't have to look through any phones. I don't have to ask a ton of questions. I'm not gonna interrogate you. If I trust you, I trust you. And if I find something out, I'm gonna choose my battles. I'm either if I have enough evidence, I'm a, I'm gonna say something and check you on it, yep. or try to find out if this is what I think it is. If I don't have enough, honestly, I just leave it alone. Yep. Yep. I'll did, you watch it. It, did you watch the last Dave Chappelle series, um, no. special? It's, there's, there's one part he's talking about like his relationship with his wife after a few. You know, they've been together for a while, and I was like, she's like. She wants to go to the club. She dresses mm-hmm. up, whatever. He's like, let's go. And she, she feels weird about him not really stressing her and wanting to go to the club, whatever. He's like, nah, mm-hmm. bro, I can stay home and eat Pringles off my stomach, whatever, right? Like, like when you don't, I, I see a lot of dudes, a lot of women too, stressing out. Like, like a lot of relationships end off of shit that you that you make up in your own mind, right? Like, you're like, it's shit that might not even be happening. But if you if you honestly trust mm-hmm. the person you're with, which you yeah. said before, and I agree, Yo, you're not stressing any of that. You're like, yo, you're so comfortable mm-hmm. with the fact that they, they, they love you and they won't, they won't exactly. fuck around on you that, yo, you, yo just go do, live your life. Be exactly. happy. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And I don't think enough people realize that there's side effects mm-hmm. to lying all the time. Mm-hmm. There's side effects to, um, the same way there's side effects to being cheated on, the mm-hmm. trauma you feel from, you know, being, you know, betrayed by someone. It goes both ways. Mm-hmm. If you're the type of person who lies all the time, you're going to be worried that the next person is lying to you all the time. If you're the type of person who's sneaky, who's who's manipulative, mm-hmm. who's cheating, and all these other things, you're going to be worried about the next person being the same way. Yeah. So, really, a lot of people who are jealous and very insecure, it's not always because they were with somebody that did them dirty and and they're still dealing with it coping with it and all this other stuff a lot of times it's self-inflicted yeah it's because they were doing people dirty every every time i talk to somebody who's had a jealous ex an insecure ex or insecure boyfriend or whatever it's either because they're they were on one side of the one side of the fence or the other yeah <laughs> It was because... I'm really... This whole conversation is triggering me, okay. by the way. <laughs> it's either because Homeboy was a dirt bag and did them dirty, yep. or it's because they were the dirt bag yep. and did their boy dirty. Yep. Yep. Their right. man dirty. So right. they run around with this guilt. Mm-hmm. They're, they're worried that their person, that the person that they're with is doing the same things that they were doing because, like, like usual, they can't take what they dish out. Mm-hmm. It's an insecurity thing mm-hmm. that needs... That needs healing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it needs a lot of work. You need to grow up, understand. Listen, we've all done dirty shit. All of us. 
it may for some people it's been some big dirty shit, and for other people just little nothing too crazy. Mm-hmm. But we've all been dishonest. We've all betrayed somebody one way or another, whether the other person knows it or not. We've all done shit that we're not proud about. But at the end of the day, you're supposed to heal. You're supposed to, um, you're supposed to self-assess and decide if that's the kind of person you want to be, if that's the kind of character you want to adopt for the rest of your life. If you really want to go through the, through the trouble of subscribing to being that type of person, that's that, that's really up to you. But some people, some of us, we actually mature. We look back yep. on stuff like that and we're like, you know what? That's some fucked up shit. I'm not going to do that again. Um, I never want to see a person that I love crying because of some grimy, grimy shit that I did. I don't want to deal with some of the guilt that may come behind me wasting a particular woman's time, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you grow from that and you just try to do better. Yeah. You learn from your mistakes and you just, you try to find some kind of resolve by being a better person moving mm-hmm. forward. But, but not everybody's like that. I some people that. are dealing, some people are dirt bags. Yeah. Some people are sneaky. Some people lie all the time. That's and they just, true. they just, they're like pigs and shit. Mm-hmm. You know, they just, they just feel more comfortable playing in their shit playing in the mud and they don't have any interest in being better people. Meanwhile, they're projecting all that shit onto other people. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, I just want to let everyone know that this uh, whole conversation triggered the shit out of me. <laughs> um, Cause I have been the super jealous dude who has, um, and know what it's like to just kind of like, you know, knowing damn well that you're the, actually the problem in a situation. Oh, nah, man. Um, I think that's all we have for questions. Actually, I'm curious. You think there was a question somebody asked me? Oh, thank I you. Really thank, to know. Thank, I, you, thank, I, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Um. So, quote, Javi, why are you always trolling on Facebook? On Facebook? Is that what people think books. I'm doing? They think I'm trolling? Dog, you are trolling. Really? Yes, you are trolling. I'm not though. Nigga. Give me one example. Oh boy. I'm not trolling, yo. I love that he says prove it and re- not realize that I have a laptop directly in front of me that I can actually prove it. I don't think I'm trolling, man. Let's see. Let's go to his Facebook page. This, yo. <laughs> Are you sure you want me to do this? Nah. I, I want, okay. <laughs> so, so Shanice, Shanice says the same thing. She's like, you're always trolling people, but I'm, I don't think I am, bro. Nigga, okay. I'm not doing it intentionally. Nigga, okay. Yo. Listen, I say what I say. Like I finally I'm in, I'm some in, strategy from the left. <laughs> oh, you mean the political stuff? I mean, yo. just in general, dog. You troll. You are a troll. Really? You are a political troll. You literally bait people into situations just that. So here's the thing. I don't knock it yeah. because you troll people specifically to have a conversation. But you know what? Okay, so here's the hilarious part about it. I don't go on anybody else's Facebook page. Like, I don't do that. I don't do Facebook like that. Like, I'm not mm-hmm. co- scrolling through people's Facebook pages or whatever. I will post something, and somebody will comment, and I will respond. Like, I feel like trolls actively go out to look to, like, just bother people, right? Like, just just be annoying. I used to be a troll when I was younger or whatever, right? Like, when social media was, like, budding. But, like, people, people come... So whatever I post on Facebook, right, it's based on, it's, it's really like based on like a, a, a stream of consciousness. I just say whatever I'm thinking at the time. It, I don't really think too much about it. I just post it. And then when people, it might elicit a response from folks and I'll respond to it. And if I do respond, it's based on the knowledge that I've gained from educating myself on certain subjects, right? Like I went to school for a lot of this shit. A lot of shit that people talk about on Facebook, I literally went to school to study that shit, like mm-hmm. especially political stuff, yep. things that deal with race, things that deal with like you know um, policing, all this stuff. Like I've studied these things. I like I I've, I've looked at the data. I've written papers, right? Mm-hmm. And then people, you know, they come to me with like their Wikipedia knowledge, shit that they probably probably saw on a YouTube video, mm-hmm. or whatever, right? And it's clear to me that they don't have the knowledge necessary to engage in these types of conversations. So I That's literally just true. I literally just say I I. I I, I literally transcribe, right? They're not my own ideas; it's facts mm-hmm. based on based on things that I've read from people that are are are, are experts in the field. Mm-hmm. And if you think that's trolling, I don't know what to tell you, bro. Like, I, shit, go to school. 
<laughs> I don't know. Read a book. Um, really, that's what it comes down yeah, to. Yeah, at the like end of the day. Like, I don't, not to offend whoever asked that question, but I, yeah, I'm not trolling, man. I love everybody. Uh, da, 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 da. I was also asked if um, asked if I could pretend to be Santa. I absolutely would. That'd be dope. I would pretend. I would absolutely dope. pretend to be Santa. I actually, I actually would be a mall Santa. I'm like, yo, but your kid ain't sitting in my lap. They got to though. No, they don't. What are they gonna do? Just stand in front of you? Like, yes. Oh. I don't want a fucking kid in my lap. That's just nasty. You really hate kids. I do. Dog, how many times do I have to say that I don't like kids? Okay, so I know you're not doing this, but I, that just brings up something that I saw on social media. Wiz Khalifa kissing his son on the lips. And people That's nasty. Like, Is it, though? Like, yes. I, don't, I don't think it's... I, I, I don't know, man. I feel like a lot of things when it comes to, like, that to Dwayne Wade's um, mm-hmm. daughter. Look. Right? Like, I think people... I think we all have a habit of sexualizing everything, like the person mm-hmm. said. Like, not, not just each other. But I think that, like when some of these things bother us, some of us, it's because we're sexualizing children. Well, here's right? the thing like, about that is, just because I think it's nasty, yeah. I'm not going to knock them for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I think that's the difference. I think it's nasty. Yeah. You do whatever it is you're going to do because it doesn't affect me directly. He's not French kissing his kid. He's just fucking kissing his kid. It's I don't give a no, shit. And this kid is I'm so pretty young. Sure, I'm pretty sure I did it as a fuck. I, just, yeah. I know for a fact I did it as a kid. Yeah. What I If I had a kid, would I kiss my kid lips? No. But that's you just me. Have a kid? Huh? You can have a kid? Nigga, I had a vasectomy, so no. That's just reversible. Huh? That's just reversible. Not in this house. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> not here. <laughs> that shit is not reversible here, dog. If my wife said one day that she wanted to have kids, we would sit down and have a conversation and we would discuss whether or not it's a good idea for us to have kids. Yeah. Honest to Odin, like, we've had this conversation before. It's like, but I don't want kids. Yeah. Neither does she. I'm fine. I like being able to go to Hawaii when I want to. Yeah. I'm good. I mean, you can just leave your kids at home. I'm not doing you, got, you have a microwave. We also have this conversation about we, there's not a lot of people that we trust to leave our kids. Who the fuck are we going to leave our kids with? You don't trust anybody not to leave our fucking kids with them. Uh, fuck that noise. Greg's pretty good. I would trust Greg with my kids. I would trust Lavelle with my kids. I trust you with my kids. Mm. But, like, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it was one... I don't know if I told the story in the podcast, but fuck it. Um... And this was one of my favorite moments in in all my wife's history. I had my father on speaker one day, and after we uh, we just got married, we just got back from our honeymoon and everything. And he goes, "Oh, now that you're married, are you having kids?" And I go, "No." We've had this conversation, Dad. I'm I'm not having kids. I don't want to have kids. And um, he goes, "It's not your decision on whether or not you have kids. It's up to the grandparents." And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm good." And I was like, "I'm good." And my father said something, <laughs> and, my, and I won't speak her. My wife said the funniest shit ever. She goes, why? So you cannot pay attention to them, too? Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, man, before note. you end, though. I have you saw question. where this was going. I, before you end, though, yeah. you said there was a question that somebody asked for Greg that you don't think he'll answer. He answered it. It was okay. about him some, letting, letting somebody um, slap his cheeks. Oh, man. I don't, I don't think Greg understood that it wasn't necessarily slapping his cheeks. That person was throwing it at him the fuck. Like, but I think Greg um, said it by him not being available, which was the answer to that conversation. Sorry, Greg's cheeks are not available. Pause. <laughs> All right. This has been the Old Man Wade Show. Um, you can find us on uh, the Old Man Wade Show on Facebook. You can find me on Old Man Wade Com oh, on Twitter oh. and Instagram. You can find us on oldmanwade.com. Um, hopefully, Harvey will put one of the two articles that I what? actually written <laughs> and put them online. There's plenty there now, though. So also, fuck Facebook for not um, letting us promote that one um, article because it had the word nipple in it. Um, Yo, everybody <laughs> has nipples. Facebook. You know what's funny? I'm gonna promote it on fucking Twitter. Fuck it. Yeah. Send me the money back. Twitter, Twitter has no scruples. Send it to me on Twitter. I'm just gonna fucking promote it. Don't yeah. send it back to me. I'm just fucking promote it on Twitter. Um, I think uh, that's pretty much all I got. CCBN. Uh, CCBN on Black Rabbit. BlackRabbit.com. New episodes. New episode will be coming out soon. Uh, B-L-A-Q-U-E-R-A-B-B-I-T.com. I've actually written a ton of articles for him over the last couple of months. Uh, he also has dope content. Um, I also want to spend a spe- a send a special shout out to Duke the Great on um, Tell Us the Truth. Uh, I've been on. Javi's been on. My wife's been on. 
like Rabbit's been on, um, is a conversation. It's um him talk having conversations that we all need to have, mm-hmm. and it's not biased. He's had uh, black Republicans on. He's had white people on. He's had black people on. And he's had like really dope conversations about everything else that's everything that's happening in our world. That conversations that need to be had. It's a really good podcast. It's a really dope fucking podcast, and I definitely think that everyone needs to take care of it. Um, does not take care of it. Take a listen to it because I, I think we can all learn from the conversations that he's having on these shows. I think it's exclusive to iHeartRadio. Oh no, you can iHeart, get you, no no because you, you, it's on um it's on um Spotify, Spotify okay, okay. and it's definitely on iTunes. I listen on iTunes. Yeah, okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, but it is on iHeartRadio, so like if sometimes I think it may come out before. Uh, let me just make sure because I'm trying to think, figure out the last time I actually listened to it. Actually, no, it is exclusive iTunes. Like I said, it is what I listen yeah. to it on. And Duke, come back on the show to get your ass handed to you. <laughs> Duke's going to come on the show soon. I want to actually talk to him about um, uh, just like stuff that's happened in the world in general because it's been uh, it's been a weird year. Also, it's, um, actually, it's Spotify that I listened to it on. His last episode was uh, Maria Ann Russell Tells Us the Truth, and that was yesterday, actually. Um, so yeah, Greg, you have anything to promote? What's the name when they can find you on Twitter? Uh, just Greg, J-U-S-S-G-R-E-G. Uh, word, of, word for the wise, um, you don't want to smoke with Greg. <laughs> I don't, listen, I, I don't really deal with the smoke or anything like that. That's, I don't even... Like, Greg will ignore the shit. Like, you want the smoke, you just fucking fire sting with that, fire extinguisher that shit and move the fuck on. I'm very friendly. You are, you are, but you're also very honest. So if someone asks you a question, they they may not like your response to it. You're not going to argue with them, but you'll have a discussion with them about things like that. And I, I appreciate about you and your... Yeah. yeah. Oh, also, comic book um, history 101. Oh, yes. Um, we had... They, I was on with you, you and um, Brandon. Yes. Um, it's a really good show. I'm going to try to sneak on as much as possible because they have really good content. We and, talk we yeah. talk all the comic book shit on that, man. Yo, so, um, yeah, love the so, geek shit. Couple of comic book um, podcasts. We have CCBM. We have yeah. uh, Comic Book One Hundred and One. Uh, yeah, we're just doing. We're doing everything. We're about to do a um, holistic um, podcast about like incense and shit. Yeah, as, as I sit here and drink this uh, lovely um, beer that's not holistic. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But yeah, oldmanway dot com. Go to it. All right. Um, does anybody have anything to say? Uh, oh, actually, no. We should um, end with Tom Cruise. So basically, Tom Cruise was talking to people like, yo, respect the fucking COVID shit. <laughs> like, duh. Look, I don't, I'm going to end with this. I don't give a fuck if you don't believe in COVID. It's a real thing. Respect it. I have friends who have issues with it and issues with all that, but you know what they do? They still know enough to respect the idea of like wear a mask in public and you know, all that. And that's one thing I have to say. I appreciate the people who may not believe it, believe in it, but still respect it enough to understand that people are still dying getting sick from this shit. <sighs> so yeah, um, I don't have anything funny to say at the end of this. Um, Damn I- it, Wade! Damn it, Wade!